I'm not winning any battle here tonight. All right, let's have some fun. Let's drink. Let's talk about Boba Fett. Okay, let's take a quick um, introduction here. We started right away. My two good friends here, Dave and Michael, that are incredible Star Wars fans, as am I. Cheers. We're going to find out a little bit more about how deep their fandom goes. Mine pretty much ends after Return of the Jedi. But, Michael, thank you. Uh, You brought the Weller. This is very, very tasty. Very good. So so as I was telling you, on on the Weller line, there's six normal bottles um they probably have some varieties that i don't know about but there's six normal bottle bottles that is at the, the kind of the low end if you can find it retail they're about 27 28 bottles you can't find bad. it in north carolina really? um, where did you find this at this uh secondary market so secondary 40 the black market yeah the black market uh secondary is 45 to 50 so it's not bad it's not bad you, you know. risked your life for this liquor and it's the low end oh my god never come back here again modern day game. han solo we are all over half a century old thank you for reminding we own us. houses we like our bourbon we understand what good wine is and good beers okay. but we love star wars we were kids when it came out yeah i i, I remember standing in line not not for the not for the first one, but for the next two, I definitely remember. Because I didn't know what I was getting into on the first. You know, no one did. Nobody did. Yeah. I remember when The Empire Strikes Back premiered, the line from the movie theater going all the way to Godfather's Pizza. And we we never went. It always was like two weeks in before we ever went to the movies. So, uh, But you think about it now. I mean, now you just go on your app and you pick your seat and your day. And But back then, it's like first come, first serve. And that line was super long. And I remember uh, there's an interview with the guy that the manager of Godfather's. We've never been so busy before. <laughs> it wasn't for the pizza. It wasn't for the pizza. Oh, that, although that's nostalgia too. So, but yeah, that's that line would literally go that long, and people would wait hours and camp for movies. And it's a great time, though. Yeah, that was, was a great time. What is it about Star Wars that just transcends generations? That what do you think that is? It's just a generation. It's just one of these happy accidents that happen because prior to 1977, you go back and you watch that sci-fi stuff. It was pretty bad. Well, I was going to say you you had Lost in Space. That I watched yeah. Lost in Space. The the old and the the one on Netflix is pretty good up until season three. We're going into a hyperdrive. But that's what you had. That was space. And I and admittedly, I was never. Uh, a Star Trek fan. Fascinating. No, not for because I didn't like it. I just it, it wasn't a Star Wars versus Star Trek. It just wasn't something that appealed to me like Star Wars. But yeah, you had Lost in Space, which looked like it was literally filmed in someone's basement, and then you have Star Wars that comes along, and I, I mean, it just that that feeling. Visually speaking, the closest thing we had to Star Wars was uh, Stanley Kubrick's 2001, which honestly, as a kid, watching that movie was boring as shit. As an adult, I appreciate the artistic well and the creativity that went into that. Even as an adult, right. even now I watch it and I love that movie. I'm like, what the fuck is this about? <laughs> I, like it's still, you know, I mean, you're you're what an hour and a half in, you're still, you know, with the apes, <laughs> the apes. What's well, AI taking dude, you over, are, dude? It's you hit on a couple of things that I would love to get your takes on with Star Wars. I have a love disdain with George Lucas. American Graffiti is an amazing story, and he did a great job directing it. And it was because of that that other producers said, "Hey, what do you got coming up next?" Before Star Wars, you had Space 1999, you had Flash Gordon. These are things where these are model ships hung off a fishing line with a sparkler behind them. That's all Hollywood understood about science fiction. That was it. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, 2001 turned that on its head, but there's only a few key moments in 2001 that you could correlate back to Star Wars, and that is the way the Discovery was shot in outer space. Mm -hmm. The way that they were using one singular light to act as a, a star for lighting, the shadows, the dimension, how big the model was and the right lenses, the shutter speed, all these things make it look real. Space 1999 wasn't doing that, right? There, you know, oh, no, the Thunderbirds cheap. wasn't doing that. He brings in these artists that know how to shoot these miniatures. 
It's in the shutter speed so that when they cut to a spaceship, it's got the same motion blur that the actors do. They understood all this. Hey, if you shoot it with this lens, it looks real. The crane shot. That so that follows the model. So that that's the motion, the motion control. Yeah. They created that motion control. So all those things, when this thing hits the theaters, it's not just the new space 1999. There's actually a story. Now it's the typical hero's journey. It's mm -hmm. the young, the reluctant hero saves the day. It's the old, the old wise master. That it's it's a it's a basic story. And that's why it works so well. But then on top of that, if those special effects look like shit, we wouldn't even be talking about this movie. Well, let's not forget, too, John Williams' epic score. Yeah. 100%. Yep. 100%. If you, if you go back go back and, and, and Google the first trailer, the temp track they have on that looks like a B movie. The story of a boy, a girl, and a universe. Star Wars. They, they contacted John Williams, who had a very good relationship, working relationship with Steven Spielberg. They had just done Jaws, 1975. And Williams brought that epic score that took, took the B movie to the next level. So on top of phenomenal visual effects, you had a phenomenal score to go mm -hmm. along with that, with an exceptionally well-known, well-respected- 100%. And conductor. that brings me back to my the disdain I have for Lucas is that he's not a really good director. He's a good idea guy. He's a story guy. Hey, I've got what if this character does this? Great. Let somebody else run with it like you do with Empire. Yeah. I hope we can all agree Empire is the best. Ivan Kirshner. Yeah. I, you know, I'll say right behind <clears throat> Empire is um, Rogue, Rogue One. One. Yes. I, I think that, yep. that to me, I if agree. I had to rank them. Uh, well, Empire, Rogue One, Star Wars. Yeah. We grew up where we had to wait three, no social media. We had to wait three years for the next installment. And we had to wait another three years. Then we had to wait 16 years, right? Well, and then, and, but, but when we had to wait 16 years, we didn't know it was going to even be 16 years. We thought that was it. Yeah. They right. Were, they weren't going to I was else. fine with that. I do believe now, looking at it at our age, there's too much Star Wars. So I'll say, Chris. One thing you're you you're inundated with Star Wars, right? You you don't like Disney for that. I'm inundated with bad Star Wars. Gotcha. Is that also the reason it stayed alive all these years? I think it stayed alive for a lot for all these years. Is well, we have people that love it, and we hope the next thing is going to be good, but it never is. Somehow Palpatine returned. Plasio suffered greatly under imperial rule. And my point was, you know, now the other the kids are seeing the stuff that that we may not like or we may not grab their and, to, and their it's keeping it alive. Their okay. perspective is different than However, ours. However, this is where I will play. Uh, this is where I will be a total asshole about storytelling here. I I really think young kids coming up right now don't know what a good story is if it came up and slapped them in the face. So they're seeing this, they're ingesting this stuff, whether it's on their phone on TikTok, on Instagram, and just short format pieces mm -hmm. that they're like, yeah, that's that's entertainment. Then Disney doesn't have the best writers writing this stuff. They're not, they're just not the best writers. So these kids don't know what a good story is. We grew up in the era of the best movies ever made. And I just don't think they're doing that now. And I don't, and I think kids honestly don't know the difference. Well, you're right. I mean, the seventies, especially if you go back and you look at Wikipedia, the, the films that came out in the seventies, there's no, no arguing that, uh, to this day, Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, and you can go into say, really Scott's Alien, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You go on and on. I'll I don't be, disagree I'm, sorry, with that. I, Dave, I'll give you a lighter. We were on vacation recently and it was our last night. We were just kind of lounging around the room. We were flipping around the channels. Ghostbusters was on. We mm -hmm. couldn't take our eyes off of it. The, the first the Ghostbusters. Original, yeah, the original, 1984. No special, I mean, not much special effects like we see it now. And we were just like watching the commercials and waiting for it to come back on. Right. And also you watch yeah. that original Ghostbusters, the original. They got cigarettes hanging out of their mouths. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. not Ryan Gosling. They're like Every day. overweight. That's what a movie star looked like in the 80s. That's what a movie well, star looked the, like. The, the problem is, and I-, I, I But it's a great story. I 110% it's, it's, it's agree with you here. And, and John Carpenter, if you go back, you watch The Thing, John Carpenter's version of The Thing, phenomenal movie, all dudes, all average dudes, the, the, uh, the Fog, John Carpenter's The Fog, Everyday people, 
not not these like Hollywood runway models, but then they make the remakes with the CW cast. It's not relatable right. to most people because that's not reality. It's just like if they were going to remake Jaws today, it wouldn't be three old guys in the boat. Yep. But thank God they didn't do that. But but with Star Wars, I think I think when you say bad writing with Star Wars, I agree with you on some levels. I agree with you with Obi Wan. That was bad writing. That was terrible writing, terrible visual effects. Um, for such a big name with Obi Wan, if you go back and you watch that, some of the sequences, they can't even get the frame ratio rights with ships, starships falling out of starships. I get that. Um, but to be fair, the Clone Wars, the Bad Batch, even mm-hmm. to an extent, Star Wars Rebels. Granted, all animated, phenomenal storytelling, yeah. and it, it it they man again they managed to do in the Clone Wars what they weren't able to do in the prequels, and that was make Annabelle a lovable, likable character. So when his fall happens, it's that much more tragic. And I'm not going to say every episode of the Clone Wars is fantastic, but if nothing else, I challenge you, Chris Stevens, you go back Disney Plus. Clone Wars season seven, last four episodes. I deleted my Disney Plus subscription. All right, Chris Stevens, I challenge you this. I have Disney, Disney Plus have, for for a month. Go back and watch the last four episodes of the Clone Wars. Here's what I'm going to do. How long would that take me? Like oh, a little over two hours. It, it's no, all, they're to all watch like 20 wait minute to, twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah, to watch which ones? The last four episodes of the Clone Wars. How about if I just watch Empire Strikes Back? Have you ever seen that uh, scene 38 Imagine? Yeah, uh, that's the, the Star uh, Wars. That's the Darth Vader, um, Obi Wan battle that these guys totally recut, kind of cut it to make it look more in line with what the uh, the prequel, yeah, lightsaber style is. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that. Oh, All right, it's phenomenal. Check this out, dude. If you haven't phenomenal. seen it, yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, so this is cool. They cut it into the actual New Hope, which is awesome. And look, look how the clarity of that. I mean, that that Blu-ray. I mean, it looks like a newer film does not look like it was shot in 1977 no they did a really good job too with just the color grade and match and everything but you look at the uh like right here all this right here what you're seeing is new of course there's the lens flare i think jj abrams had something to do with that and that's the first that where he re- gets his the saber comes to his hand i mean that's that's the stuff we saw a lot of in the cartoons we mm-hmm. saw a lot yes. of later on you didn't see that in this movie, and that's a great, just simple touch to it. Well, and there's the Rogue One, the money shot in Rogue One when he lit the lightsaber. So it ties, it, it's tying yeah. in those other elements that we saw in later in later stories. Who, who and are, what this does great is it really shows the tension of these two characters. It shows that they have a history, and that's one thing that you know they could have done. Not so much of the crazy action here, but they could have done this tension. Again, I come back to it. George Lucas, a great visionary, not a great director. A great director would have really played this well, out. Well, let's in remember in 1977, he didn't know if he'd have another movie. He didn't know if this was going to be a hit. He was making one movie at that yeah, time. Well, he was still a director. Agreed. A, a director agreed. Would say, I need to get the point across that these guys have a history. But and this the, does it. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And you, you look at that, the fighting style. And what I think is impressive by these filmmakers right here is it blends almost seamlessly with the footage of the blu-ray copy Mm -hmm. well i think the other thing that's impressive to me and you know now that we have all the after the first movie we have all the other examples that we're talking about is that the hatred that vader has for obi-wan you didn't know that in the first movie you just Mm -hmm. knew that you know all you knew was this scene there was he had felt something in the force he was the bad Uh, guy and obi-wan was a good guy and you knew there was you know a little bit of history there but but you didn't know what it was and you didn't know the level of hate the tension here the drama it's just it works so much better uh the just the sheer the sheer i mean the 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 fierce fighting. I mean, Darth Vader is scary right there. Yeah. I mean, I mean he was scary. I mean, I mean, when in, in the, when you see the old man, the two old men fighting, it's like, okay, but you look at this. I except, mean, that is like, except this scene where he just comes to the door and stops. Like, doesn't he know how to open those up? Like, <laughs> didn't he pull a whole spaceship down in <laughs> Obi-Wan? <laughs> he can't open those doors. I agree, though. The intensity and, and, it, and again, you can you can feel 
I, I'll go back to it. You can feel the hatred that Vader has. Right. Uh, I mean, and, and just by the look, that, that first look where he's looking down on him. You know, and you look at fans, and we've had this discussion before, and that's for another podcast, but people that have this skill set that are wanting to make these fan films because there's such a universal love for Star Wars, even today, whether you're a purist of the first three, whether you love everything, whether you love just the prequels and whatever it is, Star Wars is alive and well. Star Wars for me is three movies in Rogue One. That's it. Well, and, but well, and, and Rogue a, and One, Revenge of the Sith, and like Rogue One. Five movies. So, so you said so you, there. You, you said something right now. Rogue I'm One five was 2016 in the Disney era, and you agree that was one of the great ones. My own personal opinion that I think the the sequel trilogy didn't have the proper roadmap. I don't think they had a plan. That's a universal. Well, and, I'm talking about all these, everything that they're pumping out. All right. Well, okay. I, I first two seasons of The Mandalorian, I thought were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Disney, Bad Batch, Disney. Now you and I disagree on Ahsoka. I really enjoyed Ahsoka. Now Bad Disney sequel trilogy, very disappointing. I loved The Force Awakens when it came out. Very nostalgic, not overly original. Uh. I did. I was very disappointed with Obi Wan. Let's break this one down. All right, let's have some fun. Let's drink. Let's talk about fucking Boba Fett. The book of Boba Fett, first of all, terrible. Mm-hmm. The first season of Mandalorian, awesome. The Mandalorian should have been the book of Boba Fett. And if they had just kept it, just like an episodic, and every episode he's got a new bounty, I would have. Lo- would you have loved that? Just give me him going around the galaxy, kicking ass. I am, would you not watch that? I'm okay. I would watch that. I would watch that. Absolutely. Like like every episode is self-contained. I get it. And that would be great. But with The Mandalorian, with, with Grogu, I thought, just talking about the first two seasons, I thought it was really, it was a nice beginning and end. It was a nice, uh, it just it just worked for me. Right. Uh, when what Luke, was your favorite part where Jack Black and Lizzo were in it? No, that was terrible. But that was season Jason three. Was the, uh, that was season three. Jesus Christ. So how do you... But so I said season go. two. So I give it to you. How do you go in the writer's room from season one and two to that bullshit? Well, one, I think I think what you had happen was uh, you have new writers. When you throw an agenda into a, a space opera, if you will, it you, it takes you out of the element. I, I want to see storytelling. None of this is real. It's escapism. So it takes us back when we're kids and that's what we want. That's why we sit down and watch the new movies. And that's why I was going to mention this, even though the storytelling isn't what we think uh, or, you know, some of us think it's better than others. I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Like I want to sit down and just be entertained and I don't, I'm not going to pick it apart. Uh, And I'm biased because of Star Wars. And, you know, I sat through episode one and, and I wanted to love it more than anything. And I left it. I'm like, oh, I'm a little conflicted here. I don't know how I like that when I, but it was, it was Star Wars. It was something new. Hmm. It was out. We hadn't had anything in a while. And that's the same with the sequels. I, you know, are they, are they the best? No, but it, it's given us new characters. It's given us new concepts. It's escapism. I, yeah. It's escapism. And, and what I think Ahsoka is doing, and I know you don't like Ahsoka, and again, I'm going to oh, go. I'm not, I'm not liking. I, I'm not winning any battle here tonight. <laughs> you're, you're, you know, every, I thought it was like I, I didn't. It, uh, sorry, David. I, I didn't think it was the best story, and I didn't think I didn't mm-hmm. think the book of Boba Fett was the best story. Andor, Mandalorian. Um, I, 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 I tolerated um, uh, Obi Wan because I love Ewan McGregor, and but I did want to see, it, even if the story wasn't great, I wanted to see that period of time. As a child, did you ever collect? I did. Yeah, I had. I had. Well, Chris has seen. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Um, but I did collect the toy. I got him for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know. You know, at that time, I would say it wasn't collecting. It was playing. With playing, yeah. yeah. And uh, it wasn't until probably Phantom Menace started coming out. You know, when you knew there was a movie coming out, I started getting back into as a young, young in, in my 20s um, to to wanting those original figures back so you went out all right let me ask you did you stand in line at midnight for the uh toys r us release of the phantom menace i did not but i did I, but i would go i will tell you um i would go to because i was collecting them 
I would go to Walmart and mm -hmm. um, maybe Target at the time, Toy, uh, Toys R Us. And there were certain figures that only came two in a box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and those were the ones on eBay. Now, this was back in, you know, 99. And um, that's how long I've had an eBay account. And I would get the, if I could find, I think Anakin was one of the little Anakin was one of them at one point. And you could sell those for 15, 20 bucks and then go buy the figures you wanted. So I, I was doing that. And, but it was here, it was funny as originally on eBay, just as a side, that, that was the point where if I sold it to you, you sent me a fucking money order and then I would take it and deposit it. And then I would send you this figure. Like You're hoping that I'd get it. Yeah. This, this whole transaction for the Star Wars <laughs> yeah. figure took like three weeks. Yes. I, yeah. I, I waited with bated breath. <laughs> right. <laughs> Am I going to get it? <laughs> but, but yes. Yeah, so I did get back into it. Um, I have a display case that I made in wood and plexiglass in the front. It's huge. And I have all the, all of the original figures and then a few of the, a few of the variants, like the Han big head, Han mm -hmm. small head. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Yoda got... with the orange and brown snake. You know, yeah, few, yeah. Like, I don't go crazy with the variants, but the ones that were easy to put side by side. So the original, the original collection. The, yeah, how yeah. many? Yeah. How many do you have from the original collection? It's I think there's 96 um, original figures, if I remember correctly, um, and that includes the last 17, which the last 17, which were the ones that um, are the most expensive at this point aside from these variants that you get uh, but the last 17 were the were the ones like luke um was it luke and the stormtrooper helmet so i will say i have recently uh just just because it, stuff was coming up in my feed on facebook and and i'm not collecting now i have what what you showed a picture of um but it is fun to see that there's this group it's just vintage uh star wars toys and and other items but mostly toys and you'll see once a day someone says, now they could be full of shit, but once a day they'll say, hey, went to my local flea market, got, look what I got. And sometimes they're just beater figures, you know? Yeah. And some of these figures, are, you know, you might get five bucks for them. If, if that, you're, and I yeah. think that's what, when I had my dissertation about 50 year old guys collecting figures. I think, I think when you, you talk about the new stuff, it's just it's people who love nostalgia that like to collect things. It's like people that collect cigars, stamps, anything else. I I personally don't see a problem with that. I thought about something because in the last time that we talked, and I'll show a clip here. Let's let's let let's roll back the clip. If you're fifty something years old, stop wasting your fucking money on this nonsense. In some cases, you go you go to people's houses and they have walls of baseball cards old new there's a video i've seen of these two guys built the full-size cockpit of the millennium falcon oh yeah i've seen that yeah. why I mean, what are you gonna do sit in this thing no, I, I, I get <laughs> I, I do. you said it's just like someone collecting baseball cards and i thought about this before you got here tonight you're right it is you're collecting however if the guy that's collecting baseball cards, him and his buddy, dug up the backyard and put a replica of the Yankees dugout out there, you'd call the doctor. That'd be pretty cool, though. Oh, you fucking guys. <laughs>